good morning. Let us get ready and do our English lesson. Turn to page 83 in your English book. All right, we've been talking about linking verbs, action verbs, and today we're going to talk a little bit about helping verbs. So helping verbs are somewhat similar to linking verbs, sort of, kind of, but not really, if that makes sense. So, uh, I want you to look at the top of page 83. There's a big yellow box, and then right in the middle of the yellow box is a big orangey box, okay? It says verbs used as helping verbs. Am, is, are, was, were, all of those, remember, and be, those are all be verbs. And remember, those are all linking verbs, but there's more. Will, have, has, had, does, do, did, would, could, and should. And those aren't all, but those are the most commonly used verbs that are used as helping verbs. Now, let's look at this, this uh, sentence right here. Daniel is eating pizza. All right, so what is our verb in this sentence? Okay, the verb is is but what about this our verb is is eating who or what is eating Daniel now the reason it's is eating this is what we call a verb phrase because there's not two verbs there's just one phrase now usually is is a linking verb right okay but if this verb is comes and all of those other helping verbs if it comes bef right before an action verb then it's not a linking verb it's called a helping verb eating is the main verb because if you read the sentence Daniel is eating pizza in that sentence the action being done is eating right so is is just a helping verb it's not linking anything it's just helping the main verb, and so it's called the helping verb. Now, the way that you would diagram this is the way you would diagram any other sentence with a verb and a subject. You'd put Daniel, I'm not gonna spell his name out, I'm just gonna put Dan, Dan, Daniel, and then is eating. That's not two verbs, it's just one verb phrase. Is eating, and you would consider this an action verb, okay? Let's look at the next one. I will swim in the pool, okay? Now in this sentence, swim is your action. That's your main thing. But will is a helping verb. So we're gonna underline the verb phrase, will swim. Who or what will swim? Ah. And you would diagram it the same way as you would diagram this here, okay? Let's look at this one. My mother is watching is watching that's the whole verb phrase watching is what she's doing okay mother is the subject my friends have played soccer in this sentence the verb is talking about played but have is in there too so it's have played friends is your simple subject and you would diagram these all this way okay now remember get used to those that list of helping verbs there like I said that's not all of them but that's most of the ones that are going to be used the most often okay all right let us look at one more thing sometimes sometimes we will have a sentence I'm going to let's see okay Sometimes you're going to have a sentence where the helping verb and the main verb have an extra word in between them. And these are sometimes hard to find. Andrew will sometimes play checkers. Now, if you think about that sentence, what's the main verb in that sentence? Andrew will sometimes play checkers. Okay, play is the verb, that's the action. Okay, is there a helping verb in that sentence? Will. 
sometimes is not a verb, is it? Okay, sometimes tells us that he doesn't always play, right? So sometimes is what we would call an adverb because it tells when. And sometimes, no pun intended, sometimes you will find words that don't belong with the verb phrase stuck right in between there. So if I said to you, well, then what's the verb for this sentence? You would say, we'll play. What is the simple subject? Andrew. Okay. Sometimes it's not part of the verb, even though it's stuck right in between there. Okay. We have to be real careful with that. Okay. Let's look at the guided practice on page 83. It says to underline the simple subject once and underline the complete verb twice. Number one. Dr. James Naismith did invent basketball in 1891. Okay, where's your verb phrase? Did invent. Underline that twice. Who or what did invent? Dr. James Naismith. The whole thing there is your simple subject. Okay, number two. He had written 13 rules for the new game. Where's your verb? had written. Underline both of those twice. And your su simple subject is he. Number three, young men could play the game inside during the cold winter. Your verb could play. And your simple subject, men. Number four, Dr. Naismith had devised the most popular indoor sport of all time. Your verb is had devised. Who or what had devised? Dr. Naismith. All right, now the next part says underline the simple subject once and the complete verb twice. In the blank, write the word that is between the helping verb and the main verb. Good athletes will usually practice faithfully. In that sentence, what is your verb phrase? Did you say, will practice? Okay, if you did, that's correct. So underline will and practice two times. Do not underline usually. That's the word you need to write on the blank. That's the word that tells when. Okay, so that's the word that's just kind of stuck in there. He kind of snuck in between that verb phrase. And then your simple subject is athletes. Now, on this bottom thing, could you go ahead and diagram that sentence for me right quick? Go ahead and pause it while you diagram that. All right, did you diagram it like, did you put athletes right here? And did you put will practice right here? and make sure this line goes all the way through. If you did that, then you got it correct, okay? So I'd like for you to go ahead and do the next page, page 84 for your assignment. Uh, the apply and listen, you don't have to do that. So just do one through 13, it'll be worth 13 points. If you need any help or get confused, make sure and send me a note, okay? That's all for today.